Alright guys, as you know, you've probably seen it on social media and YouTube, Hafer has announced his return to Strawman in 2024. So I'm just going to do a quick chat, you know, what I'm feeling about Hafer coming back and my excitement to be competing against him in the near future. Hafer retired, I think, in 2020. I only got to really compete with Hafer at Worlds once or twice and uh, I kind of wish he was there when I won, you know, my two titles because it would have been good to compete against him. He pulled 501 deadlift, he won Worlds, he's won multiple Arnold's titles, he's won um, Europe's strongest man, so he has won a lot of titles. Hafer was the best in the world when, when he was competing. He was breaking every record, he was kind of like my build, six foot eight, six foot nine, 200 kilogram plus guy and you know, I, I used to study him a lot and took a lot from it, from what he how he trained, um, how he took stuff into competition, how he took the pressure, how he was mentally and it really helped me as well and uh, yeah I was gutted when he left because like I said I kind of just was starting to get close to him and uh, he was a really really good athlete just to be around. Yeah so obviously I think he said he's coming back in 2024, I don't think he's announced what competitions he's doing but hopefully it'll be the big ones like the Arnold's or Rogue, the Europe Strongest Man as well just so we can have those kind of awesome battles. Um, also want to see how his body reacts to going from powerlifting to losing all that weight to then trying to put all that back on. You know, Hafer is also a genetic beast and can put on weight very quickly and get strong very quickly as people have seen on his Instagram and social media. So, but I want to see how his body holds up in the first year of competing. I don't know what goals he has, but I can't wait to just stand, you know, side by side with him again. He's a really, like I said, inspirational guy. He uh, knows so much about the sport and very knowledgeable. And like you said, he's missed the sport, he's missed competing in it. And we've missed having him competing. We've missed have, having him, you know, behind backstage. We've missed having the banter and stuff. So it's going to be really, really good. Yeah, the question I get is why? Why did he think, why did he leave the sport earlier? Why did he, you know, just stop the sport? But I think it was, I mean, when you're, pulling that much weight, 501 kilograms, when you're like, your body's basically, I think he was up 200, 200, 200 plus kilograms, and you know, that's not healthy, it doesn't matter <laughs> what everyone says, if you're a 200 kilogram man walking around, you can't walk around 200 kg every single day, so he may have, you know, was maybe talking to his wife Kelsey and said, I'm, you know, going to step away from the sport of straw man and do something to make himself healthy, and he has a kid as well, and uh, being a 200 kilogram guy, guy when you have a, a kid is it's really really hard so I think he did the right thing he went away from the sport he wanted to uh, he wanted to dip his hand in other things you know obviously he did boxing which everybody knows about as well he got really fit from that he did a he was doing some like maybe bodybuilding stuff like that as well but then he wanted to do powerlifting which was his next main focus which you know is it's cool because he always wants to be part of the strength scene, but he wanted to change it up. And powerlifting, you that doesn't mean you have to be like 180, 190, 200. You can lose a bit of weight, and it's just those three, the deadlift, squat, and bench press. So it didn't do too much to your body either. And he, and he excelled in that very, you know, very well. I think everybody's seen on social media and some of the meets he done. Some of the lifts he was doing were unbelievable. But um, I think he missed Strawman so much that, and I think he realised he was missing Strawman when he was going to like. You know, do the spectate these events. He was seeing other strong men um, with meet and greets, and he was maybe you know missing out on the kind of the oh, I just did this log press today, I just did deadlift today. He was missing out on all that kind of talk and buzz. So I think him getting injured in powerlifting, although it was unlucky, might have been the best thing that could happen to him because now he's coming back into strong man. He's going to be healed. He's going to have much more protection with the extra body kind of weight and fat, and as well, and he's going to enjoy the stuff that means the most to him. He's going to be in the gym doing like. Atlas stones, log press, deadlifting, all that kind of stuff that's fun. So he's going to have fun and train and he's going to be able to eat like a beast again, have full control of his body, which is going to be cool to see. Because I think when half hour, like I said, is at his peak, he is very hard to beat and that just pushes everybody else in this strongman game to get better and better and better. Like, you know, with, with half hour being away from the sport so much and how his body changed, I mean, you have to get that he's done boxing and powerlifting and he's kind of, you know, he's, no, he's not been anywhere near 180, 190, 200 kilogram body weight. So for him to kind of get back up to that, it's going to be extreme because obviously he has to be eating a lot more food again. He's going to be training much more intensely again and he's going to have to recover. So, and obviously as well, with this pec tear that he's had that's coming, um, it's it's going to be a new one because you know, he only done powerlifting for a short time, got this chair. We don't know how bad his tear is. We don't know if when he's low pressing, when he's pressing, if there's a... If there's any problem with it 
So it's all it's quite hard to speculate how quick or how he's going to come back. But in my eyes, I think, you know, when I look at Hafer, because judging from me, when I took 10, 11 months off after my second Worlds title, um, and I came back to Arnold, so I came back to one of the heaviest shows in the world, which was a mistake in my half. I've already I said that already. I shouldn't have had that much time off because even having ten months off, like off the diet, off training heavy, off training events, your body does lose kind of like oh, when you start going back into them after that ten months, your body's like, whoa, I'm not used to this. So you get more DOMS. It takes so much longer to get you back to that uh, that kind of peak you were at. Getting comp. Uh, fit and getting gym fit is totally different things. It's easy to get gym fit, but to get comp fit, you still need another three or four months. So, for me, like going into that competition in March, I was nowhere near fit. Even like Worlds, I was getting there. So it wasn't until like Royal Albert Hall this year in July that I was actually back to my fitness. So that was I came back training in like December. So that's like eight months it took me to get nine months to get even get back to where I where I belong, uh, where where my strength is, and it's still gradually going up and up still. So. I think Hafer's been off three years. Yeah, he's been doing powerlifting, but it's a total different game than lifting Atlas stones, lifting logs. You're just doing the three kind of compound lifts, deadlift, squat, and uh, bench press. And he's not, you know, I didn't see him doing any of the strongman stuff at all. So, obviously, everybody knows Hafer is an extremely strong guy. He adapts quickly to changes, but it's more if he, if he how, when he comes back for the first competition... I think his first competition is going to be, he'll see what he is, and then he'll take it from there. In my eyes, I don't think he's going to be able to, you know, keep up with the best guys in the world on his first competition back. And I think if he does try to, he might, he might, you know, he might come back too quick and then burn out, and then, you know, we might not see the best of Hafer. But I think with Hafer, he's smart, so I think it'll be a comp by comp, right? The first comp back. Let's try and aim for fifth or sixth place. Then the next one, aim up and up and up, and he'll try. He'll start peaking, and his body will start get adapting and getting used to it. Because again, as well, powerlifting's a one-day thing, and you get a lot of breaks between events. With a straw man, you know, Arnold's two days, Rogue two days, Welsh Straws man five six days, Giants live one day, but the events are so fast-paced. So again, it's trying to right. But like I go back to saying, gym fitness and comp fitness are two different things. So he could be gym fit. But come to a competition, he's not been in a competition in strawman for two or three years, however long it was. So that will be the thing that I think shocks him the most as well as like going from an event straight to an event, straight to an event. So, you know, it just really depends. I think he's obviously going to hit it hard to train hard. He's coming back to, you know, make a storm. But if I was half for, I would, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I would take my time. Obviously, have goals every competition, and by the third or fourth one back, that's when you want to be peaked and back to your best. But yeah, it's Hafer. He can do amazing things, but I think with the pet injury that he's had as well, he needs to be a bit more cautious and see what happens. But I just like I said, I look forward to battling with him, even from his first competition to how long he's going to be in the sport for. But I, I cannot wait to kind of get back on the on the field of him and uh, have some battles with him because it's been quite good in the past. You know, if anybody in Strongman or even a fan of Strongman doesn't want half our bat in the sport, it's you're in the wrong sport. Because, like Brian Shaw, like Eddie Hall, Halfers, you know, done a lot in the sport as well. And Halfers proved that he's one of the strongest guys on the planet, and he's done some seriously impressive things, which you know put, makes everyone's jaw drop to the floor. And I'm always a believer in to be the best, you have to beat the best, you know. And like if you're competing against like one or two good guys. You're not really doing a justice to yourself. If you're saying I don't want to compete against Half, I don't want to keep, keep against Brian, I don't want to compete against Eddie, I don't want to keep competing with Mitchell, then you're never going to improve as an athlete because you're only going to stay at that same level, and there's no point in going to that next level because you don't have to. But now, you know, now all these guys are coming back. It's like next year there's going to be like I said, Half or Martins, me, Mitchell, Novakov is back to his best, Kielakowski is back to his best. That's like six, seven guys. That's basically a World Strongest Man final that haven't been together for a long, long time. And that in itself is very, very interesting. To see even Martin's back is going to be mind-blowing because, you know, when he's back, when he's at his best, he's unbelievable as well. So, and it's going to be so much more, I think it's going to be so close, all these competitions as well. But yeah, having Haffer back is just a few in my fire because, you know, I know how strong Haffer is from his previous competitions. And I know that when I'm against the best guys, it pushes me to be the best. If I'm in a competition that I know, right, these guys aren't as good or like maybe a bit, bit 
worse than me or not as good as me. I won't push as hard, but I know like, I've got Hafer, I've got Martins, and I've got Mitchell to beat in this competition. I'll go full at it and train as hard as I can because you're, you know, you're, you're when you beat, if you beat the best in the world, then it's just a, it's a massive feeling. It's a great feeling. So yeah, I welcome Hafer back into the sport with open arms. And like I said, I cannot wait for battles and it's going to be really, really good because in my eyes, he's been a really big miss. And I think, you know, when he left Strawman, he had unfinished business. And I think he knows that himself that, he left, he wasn't finished, but he's, you know, he's done his other journeys and he's now coming back and he is going to be back to his best, hopefully, in the first year or two of Strongman's. Right, guys, that is the chat over. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, I cannot wait for Halford to come back. I hope you guys cannot wait for him to come back and battles between me and him are going to be epic and spicy. Thank you for watching. As always, stay safe, smile and stay spicy.